Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to This Changes Things, brought to you by American Express Open, helping you guys get business done. I'm Corey Hale on this lovely, cool day in New York City with the one, the only, Baker Machado. Yeah, guys, while American Express Open, of course, is the presenting sponsor of this particular program, the opinions and the statements expressed by me, Corey, all of our guests, they're all our own. So, all right, let's jump right in, Corey Hale. As we should. Now, we hear a lot about work culture and how important it is for maintaining a happy staff. But how can you tell if a work culture is toxic before you ever work Great there? Great question. Something a lot of people want to know. Joining us now with some insight on this exact topic is Jared Linzon, writer for Fast Company. Jared, thanks so much for joining us today. Greatly appreciate it. I know a lot of people, when they're trying to get into a new company, I mean, obviously they want to get a job, but you also want to make sure you're not getting a job at a company where your personal morals and values don't align with the company culture. So some what are some of the ways you can spot a toxic work culture very early on in the interview process? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, of course, it's tough to tell people not to take a job when they need a job. But in the long run, if you end up working somewhere that doesn't have a culture that really fits your values, it's going to end up taking its toll. So it is very important to, to really make uh, sure that you're considering certain things before you accept an offer. So a few things to look out for. Number one, you want to make sure that the job uh, process, the recruiting process, doesn't seem too rushed, because a rush process might mean that they're just trying to get people through the door, and they're not really taking the time to consider whether or not you're an actually a, a good fit, or that they're not putting as much emphasis on creating a, a good culture. They're just trying to fill some seats. But also, a very slow process could also mean that things aren't very efficient there. So that is something to look out for. But then there's other things that you might want to uh, ask about specifically. Uh, and most employers will say that they appreciate it when the candidate asks legitimately tough questions. Not the questions that are answered already on the job application, but things that are actually a little bit perhaps difficult to answer, like asking, for example, what was the last really detrimental thing that happened to this company? Was it a mass layoff? Was it losing an account? And how did management handle that situation? And getting those sorts of answers early before you have to find out for yourself will definitely go a long way in ensuring that you end up at the right place and in a work culture that will ultimately uh, be satisfying for you. Yeah, the tough questions are always, you know, they always ask us all the time in interviews, do you have any other questions for us? So asking those tough questions are definitely a big one. But I think it's really interesting. How can people know through the bathroom if it's going to be a toxic work culture or not? Because I find that really interesting by just checking the bathroom, you learn a lot more about the company as a result. Yeah, so uh, that was something that was told to me by one of the interviewees, uh, Piyush Patel, who uh, is the former CEO of Digital Tutors, and he recently wrote a book about culture. And he told me that, that you always have to check the bathroom during a job interview, which, of course, that was a little interesting. But his suggestion is that if you see an empty toilet paper roll in the bathroom, that might suggest that there's a culture there of passing the buck, because... In the bathroom, you're at your most vulnerable. And if you have to trust the people that you're working side by side every single day, but one of them didn't care enough to change the toilet paper roll and left you in a difficult position when you're at your most vulnerable, perhaps it's not a good culture and perhaps it's not a culture where people really feel a responsibility to their coworkers. So yeah, even the bathroom can be an indication. Wow, really fascinating. Wow. At a place like Cheddar, we are always stocked full of toilet paper. So we are <laughs> definitely safe. We actually so. really do. We have the extras on the side, but I never knew that. And that's actually really good. But it's a good point though. It, it is. Up. Passing the buck because they didn't refill the toilet paper. All right, Jared, what are some of the biggest traps you've seen people perhaps fall into when it comes to workplace culture? Um, in terms of the biggest traps, well, I think a few years ago, research started coming out that millennials were interested, uh, more interested in culture and values and leadership than their paycheck. In fact, a lot of them uh, said that, or majority said that they would be willing to take a pay cut in order to work for a place that had a good culture that aligned with them. And companies started to hear, oh, wait, we can pay our millennials less if we throw in a ping pong table and a cereal bar. Um, so you got to watch out for some of those superficial perks, the ones that companies are implementing to say that they have a good culture and perhaps even have a lower uh, salary for some of their younger employees saying that we make it up with our culture and our perks. Those, those things, you know, the ping pong table and the food and the free coffee, whatever it may be, those aren't culture in the way we think of it. Um, that's just stuff, and stuff doesn't indicate whether or not it's a friendly work environment.
Uh, Jared, we have about a minute left, and there was basically the list of some of the things to really kind of take a look at. One of the last ones in there, in addition to kind of, if you have the chance, maybe walk around the, the entire complex and get a sense of what the building looks like and how people are working, but one of the other ones is the size of the company. Why does the size of the company kind of indicate where you see the trajectory of the company going in terms of its toxic workplace? Absolutely. Well, for there, it's not so much worrying about a toxic culture, but more so finding a cultural fit. And everybody works in different environments differently. Uh, some people know that they work better in an open concept office. Others would prefer to have their own cubicle or office space. Some prefer a really big organization uh, where they feel like they can make an impact. Others prefer a small company where they can feel like they're, they're part of something like a, a little family. So it's, it's, uh, some of it is knowing the company, but some of it is actually just knowing yourself, knowing what environment uh, will help you thrive and, and get the best work uh, out of you because this is a long-term commitment. You want to make sure that you're going somewhere that will really let you uh, grow your career in a meaningful way. Well, thank you so much, Jared, for joining us. And now everybody during their interviews are checking the bathroom. <laughs> well, no, you know what Absolutely. I was thinking, Baker? I'm not just checking it. Well, I already know how the bathrooms are at Cheddar, and they're fully stocked. But now when I go to other places, like, I'm I don't know, checking. like Starbucks or something, like, now i got to yep. check the bathroom and figure out what is going on at that company. Good investigative work, Jared. Of course, he's a writer thank over you. at Fast Company. Coming up, guys, on This Changes Things, the startup that's disrupting the billion-dollar tux rental industry. That and so much more coming up.